Hey y'all, thank you so much for joining me for this week's What's for Dinner. On Monday, I made a delicious pot roast using up this pork sirloin roast that I've had in my freezer. So it's a little over two pounds and as you can see, I got it for super cheap and that's because it's bone in. Um, I prefer boneless, but obviously you can use either or. I did trim off most of that fat and then I drizzled it in some vegetable oil and rubbed this seasoning blend on. And all this is is a combination of salt, pepper, onion and garlic powder, and some paprika. As always, the recipe will be linked in my description box so you can get those exact measurements. So I did decide to cook mine in my Dutch oven. This was kind of like a lazy day, so I had the time to kind of, you know, watch over it. But you can also do this in your crock pot or your instant pot. And the recipe that I'm going to include has instructions for all three, which I thought was pretty cool. So I only used about half of that seasoning blend because the original recipe calls for a three to five pound roast. So obviously I didn't need it all for that small one. Um, but I will be using the rest later on in the recipe. So this cooking method is pretty different to me, but I wanted to follow it exactly as it was written since it was my first time trying this recipe just to see how it would turn out. So you want to start it off at high heat at 450 degrees and you're going to let that go for 30 minutes and it will look something like this. It's the equivalent to like searing it and locking in those flavors and then you're going to knock the heat down to 350 and let it go for an hour. So at that point, I pulled it out and added in my raw veggies. Feel free to add whatever you want to here, but I'm just doing the classic potatoes and baby carrots. I already had those on, on hand and needed to use those up. And then you're going to pour in two cups of apple juice. And I think that is really the secret ingredient to this recipe that makes it so incredible. And then I just added on the rest of that seasoning mix to season the veggies. And then I'm going to add some fresh rosemary. You only really need like one sprig, but I just finished off the pack so I didn't let it go to waste. And then you're going to let it finish for an additional hour. And then it is done. I did want to note that cooking it this way without a lid is going to give those carrots more of like a roasted carrot vibe. So it's like they're tender, but they have a slight crunch to them, which I know a lot of people love. But we are more of like a steamed carrot family. So the only thing I would do different next time is I would add my lid to the Dutch oven on there that last hour of cook time. So I just wanted to add that in case anyone out there is like us. But yeah, so the recipe did not include this step, but I wanted to thicken up that liquid and make it more of like a gravy so that it could like really cling to the veggies and just to have something to kind of pour over that sliced pork. So I just threw in a simple cornstarch slurry. So just some cornstarch and cold water. And I just let that come up to a simmer until it thickened the way I want it to. And I just think this looks so much better. So at this point, I added my pork back on and just a little sprig of that rosemary to make it look fancy. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure some people out there will disagree, but I feel like this is a pretty healthy dish. But of course, I had to add some high calorie sides, which is completely fine. We like to enjoy our food around here. So I did make some cornbread and some mac and cheese. And yeah, this recipe was so delicious. That flavor was really incredible. It was like slightly sweet, but not overpowering. My only complaint is that pork was a little bit overcooked, but like not enough to make me annoyed or anything. Um, I was worried about that happening, but I really think it's because of my smaller roast. And I also use a different cut than what the recipe called for. Next up, I am making a lemon chicken orzo soup that my kids go crazy for. So I start off with two stalks of celery and I peel two carrots and I'm just going to dice all of that up. You could also chop up an onion here if you wanted to, but we know I'm not going to do that. But I am going to melt down one tablespoon of butter. I'm going to heat up one tablespoon of olive oil and then I'm going to dump in my veggies. And I'm just going to saute it around and let it cook down for at least seven minutes. This is going to help it start to get tender. And then I am going to throw in a big spoonful of minced garlic. We love garlic in this house. And your house is going to start smelling amazing at this point. But I'm going to let that cook for at least 30 seconds. And then I'm going to throw in two tablespoons of just some plain all-purpose flour. I'm going to stir that to coat the veggies. And I'm just going to cook that flour taste out anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute. And then I'm going to add in my chicken broth. The original recipe calls for, I believe, six cups, but I just did eight cups. So like two cartons. Then I'm going to throw in my boneless, skinless chicken thighs that I have seasoned with Mrs. Dash lemon pepper seasoning on both sides. This is at least one and a half pounds. And then I'm going to throw in some Italian seasoning. I don't really measure my spices anymore. I feel like I've got a pretty good eye for it now. But I also added in some onion powder and I'm just going to bring that up to a bowl. And then I'm going to add my lid on, but let it slightly vent 
turn it down to a simmer and let that cook for 15 minutes. Then I'm going to turn my heat back up to get that back up to a boil. And then I'm going to add in one cup of orzo pasta. And I'm just going to let that cook for 10 minutes. You do want to stir it often or else that pasta is going to really stick to the bottom, especially if you're using a Dutch oven. But yeah, now it is done. I'm just going to fish out that chicken, remove it to a cutting board, and just tear that meat apart. I don't really know why I was using a knife to cut it because it was so incredibly tender. All I had to do was take my two forks and pull it apart, but... After I got that done, I added that back on into the soup. I have cut my heat off at this point and I'm adding in the juice of half of a lemon. Um, that's more than what the recipe calls for, but I have been citrus obsessed lately. Um, and then you just wanna season it with salt and pepper to taste. And that is it, it is done. How delicious does that look? I'm telling y'all, this is a keeper. And I just served it with some garlic breadsticks that I cooked up in my air fryer and it was the perfect dinner. We were all satisfied. This was our Thanksgiving spread. We had dinner at my parents' house, and don't worry, it was a really small gathering, so please don't come at me with the COVID comments. I understand that it is very real, but yeah, this time last year, the holidays were absolutely terrible for personal reasons, but it just made me extra thankful this year that things are going good, and I was able to sit around the table and enjoy this delicious meal with my family, and I hope that all of you had a great Thanksgiving. On this day, I made a cheesy ham and noodle like casserole type dish using the leftover Thanksgiving ham that my dad sent me home with. And just look at this cheesy goodness, like yes. So to make this, I just boiled up a package of egg noodles, drained off that water and threw it back into the same pot, followed by that ham that I just kind of pulled apart. I'm also gonna be adding in one can of cream of chicken soup and then some sour cream and then some milk. And I'm just using my cream of chicken can to measure out that milk instead of dirtying up a measuring cup. And then I'm just throwing in some garlic powder and some black pepper. And I'm just gonna give that a quick stir. And then I'm gonna add in about one cup of this Monterey cheese. And then once that's incorporated, I'm gonna give it a little taste test to see if it's missing anything, and it was. So I decided to add in some Lari's season salt. I love that stuff. But now it is ready to be transferred to a casserole dish. And here I'm just taking the back of my wooden spoon and I'm just kinda spreading that out into an even layer. And then I'm just taking an additional cup of that Monterey Jack cheese and spreading that evenly over the top. And that's gonna go in my oven at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes, and it is done. I'm telling y'all, all this turned out so good and it was even better the next day so if you have any leftover ham run and make this right now you won't be disappointed I topped it with some fresh parsley that I had initially bought for that lemon chicken soup and I had forgot about it so I just wanted to make sure that I used that and I served it with some steamed veggies I wanted to incorporate that in the casserole but I knew my kids would just pick it out Next up, I was just craving some basic hard shell beef tacos, so I had to make it happen. So I just topped it with some lettuce, tomatoes, cheese, sour cream. I have my taco sauce on the side, and of course some lime wedges to squeeze over. I have been loving that. And I decided to do something a little different with the rice this time. It was more like an enchilada rice with beans and corn. I feel myself making it, but I thought it was just okay. I prefer my regular Mexican rice recipe. So I just deleted the footage, but I will include the recipe down below if you wanna try it. I think y'all can probably tell by the ingredients what's about to go down. So I am gonna be doing the copycat like KFC bowls. I've only had that one time from the restaurant and it's been a long time ago and I have never done like the at home version. I've seen it all over the internet and it just sounded really good. I think my kids will like it, so fingers crossed they do. It's after Thanksgiving and I'm just looking for something really simple and quick to throw together. So I have the great value popcorn chicken. I'm gonna throw like half of the bag in my air fryer, get those nice and crispy. I have the McCormick Brown Gravy Packet. I'm just gonna put that on my stove, going by the directions on the back. I have a can of corn, and this is some of that um, extra sharp cheddar cheese that I shredded up last night for tacos that's left over. And this is something I have not bought in years. Um, if you buy this, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. We just don't really care for the instant mashed potatoes. Like if I don't feel like peeling potatoes and stuff, I will get like the Bob Evans already made mashed potatoes that you just put in the microwave. We really love those. But like I said, we've just never really been a fan of these. I don't believe I've ever bought this brand though. So I don't know, we're just gonna give it another try. Like I said, I'm looking for something quick to throw together. And it was funny because even when I picked these up at Walmart, Josh just kind of gave me a look. That's how you know you've spoiled your man too much. But yeah, he'll get over it. So I'm just going to throw this together and hopefully it's a hit.
So these were a huge hit. We absolutely love them. So if you haven't tried this before, I would highly recommend. It's perfect for those busy nights. But yeah, for the instant mashed potatoes, like I wouldn't want them by themselves. But with the brown gravy and all the stuff that I added, it worked out just perfect. So I would definitely do that again. But that is going to wrap up this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. As always, thank you so much for watching. And I hope you all have an amazing rest of your week.